Hi everyone and welcome to this pick a card reading on the subject of blessings coming in June. I hope everyone's okay out there and um, using this time for reflection, planning, strategizing and um, staying fit and healthy and ready for whatever is ahead of us. So just focus on the cards, see which pile you're drawn to. Focus on the stones if that works for you. We've got rose quartz, aventurine, we've got a nice polished amethyst and we've got tiger's eye as well. And when you're ready just go to the timestamp for that particular stone and I hope you enjoy your reading. Bye. Okay so if you chose the rose quartz pile in June you could be faced with quite a lot of big decisions. So you could be coming out of this period of isolation that we've all been in, thinking about what's the best way for you to move ahead. And you're being asked to take your time making decisions because even though you've had lots of time to think things through, you may have been um, someone who's been at home with, um, you know, unable to work and just waiting for things to get moving again, trying to meditate, contemplate deeply, think about your choices ahead, or you may have been working from home, you may have been reflecting and deciding that maybe you want something completely different when this is all over. This has been a time of huge shifts and changes and awakenings for a lot of people because when you're in a situation that means your choices are narrowed down, you become very clear about what your most natural and joyful choices actually are. But for this group, you might not be completely clear or you might have an idea and it's not quite the whole picture just yet. So you're being asked to just take time, reflect, don't rush into anything. There could also be a temptation to fall back into old patterns in the past, um, addictive behaviours or relationships that are not necessarily for your highest good. You might feel a real pull towards something that feels safe uh, or that just or that feels unsafe but just has this kind of magnetic pull for you. Something that you know isn't necessarily right for you, isn't necessarily good for you, but you know, having been in isolation for so long or having been um, away from social situations, it might just start to look very tempting again. Some things that you know are not for your highest good could look very tempting now that you're free, liberated, or at least, you know, on the way to, to being free again. So take your time, don't make any rash decisions. Your focus needs to be much more on your prosperity, your own abundance, your own autonomy in the world, building a future for yourself, staying with your new intentions that you may have um, connected with through contemplation, meditation, and staying very positive about what you're actually able to achieve or manifest for yourself in the future. There's another message here that's saying, let yourself receive. So if you're in a situation where you're having to ask for help and, you know, this this need for help is maybe confusing you, making you want to behave rashly without thinking, stop, breathe, meditate and connect with genuine higher sources of wisdom that will guide you into more productive ways of seeking assistance rather than escape assistance rather than escape is what I've just heard. So let yourself receive from the right energies, from the right bodies, organisations, whatever, in a way that allows you to continue to follow your highest path and your highest good and to stay liberated, to stay free, to stay in line with your higher will. Okay. Um, and your starseeds oracle cards are, your messages are, pave a new path be the leader you wish you had. So you might have felt at some point during this period that you wish you'd had someone to guide you, that you wish you'd had someone that felt as if they were in your corner, that you would have liked to have had some someone to just steer your steps or a particular practice or, or a structure. 
and what you're being asked to do is to focus on your own journey as a leader and to become the leader to others that you wish you'd had. So you're very clear now about what people need. For some of you, this will be about stepping onto your path as a light worker, as a healer, as someone who suddenly feels, I need to have a voice in the world. Or you might have lapsed in that and you might realise, actually, all the other things you've been trying have not been satisfying and they've actually not created abundance for you because they haven't been in alignment with your divine highest path. So you're being asked now more than ever to step up and step into that leadership role and be the leader that you've been looking for. Um, forge a new path. Don't follow the crowd. Don't feel you've got to just fall in line with what everyone else is doing. And don't don't try to be the kind of leader that um, everyone else is being who's doing something similar to what you want to do. Don't be afraid to be different. Don't be afraid to be unique. Don't be afraid to create something completely new that's unique to what your needs were not so long ago. Okay. Um, let your pain guide you forward. Let your because there are others experiencing exactly the same limitations, restrictions, and pain that you've experienced. There are other people who need liberating. There are other people who need to come together with you to pull their resources to think about a more productive future that enables you to be free to pursue your path free freedom is a big thing now and you know obviously um what's the way to really appreciate freedom to celebrate freedom and to live freely to experience restriction for a period of time so this is a real a message to to take that freedom to use it wisely to act from wisdom rather than a place of rebellion like yay I'm free I'm going to go crazy I'm going to do all the mad things I wasn't able to do I'm going to um, connect with um, unwholesome alliances that you know people from the past that weren't good back then and I'm going to just try to fill a space fill a space fill a space don't fall into that trap allow this to have been a cleansing period that really wakes you up to what your what your natural joys and inclinations are what your true joys your highest joys and um forge a way ahead that will allow you to really fulfill your your deeper higher calling and the earth pulsing is your other message from the starseed oracle pulse of the mother slow down spend time in nature. So in other words, nature has a rhythm. Nature has a pulse that's very gentle, that's very healing, that's very wise and all-knowing. Things continue to grow in nature. Flowers are blooming. Something's always happening, even underground in the winter when it looks as if nothing is moving. Seeds are germinating. Things are happening. So you're being asked to breathe, take your time, Allow the natural pulse of your life, the rhythm of your life. You're not running out of time. You haven't lost time, actually, in the last few months. You've gained a greater awareness that will enrich you with more time in the future because you'll be able to, I'm sorry to use a cliche, but you'll be able to work smarter, not harder, because what you do now going forward, if it's aligned with your truth, it will mean that your actions will be rewarded much more easily. They will be much more meaningful. And so there's less of a need to panic than there was before actually before you might have had an awful lot of busyness going on lots of doing and not actually moving forward running on the spot now you're actually going to start to make slow and steady progress just enjoy in fact go out into nature observe nature watch the simplest things and notice how utterly beautiful they can be just, you know, the wind rustling through the trees, the grass that's just always growing, no matter what, it's just there, isn't it? It's just there, naturally. Butterflies, birds, just natural, beautiful things that just move very slowly, but very powerfully. Things that allow us to breathe and, and just allow yourself to harmonise with their rhythm and you will see a much clearer way forward. OK, that's um, I love that message. That's a really lovely message for the Rose Quartz group. And also the fact that you chose the Rose Quartz just really um, emphasises the fact that you need to learn 
how to receive, but how to really receive rather than getting into these sort of bargains. Bargains, you know, that temptation card, it's like making an unwholesome bargain that doesn't serve your highest good. You know, like, I'll do this for you, you do this for me, back scratching. It's not for your highest good. Your highest calling lies elsewhere. It's in allowing yourself to receive in a way that enriches your soul so that you can give from a really high calling and from a high place and from your heart. Okay, that's it, Rose Quartz Group. I hope you enjoyed that. And, okay, um, if you chose the Adventuring Group, this is a really interesting reading. Um, a little bit conflicting, actually, but um, let's just let's just have a quick look at it. So, in June... You have a lot of conflicting feelings. You have, on the one hand, emotional withdrawal. On the other hand, you have eternal love. And eternal love is promised for you. And then you have intuition. Um, you know, the card of following your intuition, being in tune with your guidance. And then you have, next to that, you're being asked to honour and trust your your feelings. So it's as if you're following your intuition, but you don't entirely trust it. And you are withdrawing emotionally from, or moving away from a situation, but you're also wondering whether this is the right situation. You desperately want that eternal love, that love that is really honouring and, and pure and true and the love that you're destined for. And you also have the card that says you're being helped and you have right next to that worthiness. So you're receiving help from heaven, but you're not actually allowing yourself to let it in because you don't feel worthy of that help. So there's a lot going on here. And I feel that in June, that situation may continue, but it does seem to be coming to a point where you will actually begin to allow yourself to receive because you'll start to realise that it's the only way forward. You've got the fact that you've chosen a venture in means that, OK, some of this is to do with your your luck, your ability to manifest, your ability to receive abundance, to to raise your thoughts in a way that allows you to do that. And I know that's a, a big issue at the moment with everything that's been going on in the, the post, um, not, not post-apocalyptic, the post-viral um, thing, um, energy, that people are having to, we're having to really bring ourselves up um, in terms of our thinking, stay positive, stay in a, in a high vibration and con continue to build the future that we believe in, the future that we really know that we came here to create. So working in 5D when 3D is, D is doing everything possible to bring us back, to get us drawn into drama, to, to lower our frequency. <coughs> oh, excuse me. <clears throat> Just sneezing out some of that energy there. <laughs> okay, so staying in a really high vibration for you is going to be utterly essential in June. Really, really important because I do feel, looking at that card of emotional withdrawal, I feel that that's partly to do with the fact that you've spent time in contemplation and you've become, you've started to feel as if you're going more into yourself. But ultimately that's a really good thing because you've connected much more with your intuition. For some, it will mean that you'll be walking away from a connection in June because you've come to certain realisations about that connection, possibly through having more time to think about things. Um, it's a bit like that um, coaching exercise where, where you are, you're asked, if you had six months left, what would you do? I think something like a huge global crisis, um, real or imagined or whatever, you know, whatever else is going on, there are huge lessons in it. And something like this that is so extreme can really sharpen up our awareness of what is really working in our lives. So in other words, if that had been it, you know, if if it had been a, an incredibly desperate situation that meant that your life was a life of limitations, you know, and, and it was it was sort of, you know, well, let's not even say that. Let's not even go there. But it's really made time much more precious. It's made us much more aware of how precious our lives are and how precious we are and how important it is for us to spend time in relationships and situations and work that's that's really that are really rewarding and and meaningful and fulfilling and right that have a sense of rightness that that bring joy 
sorry to use the Marie Kondo, but the things that spark joy that are really important. And I feel for some people who've come to this group, you've realised that there are a lot of things in your life that don't spark joy and you have spent time withdrawing from them. And at the other end of the spectrum, you are dreaming of this eternal love, this true love, this thing that brings true joy. For some, it could be career. It's not necessarily about a relationship. It could be that you're withdrawing from a particular career or a way of life, a way of viewing things, or a way of loving and honouring or not loving and honouring yourself. So you're looking for that deeper love, that greater love, that real love, that that essential and eternal love. And in June, I feel as if everything that you do, if you really trust and on your intuition, is going to be leading you closer and closer to that love. For some, it will be literal. It will be that a love like that will appear in your life and that the opportunity for something, something much greater, um, much more exciting and fulfilling, rewarding, even spiritual, is going to come into your life. A partnership that's based on spiritual principles and you will be using your intuition intuition at a very deep level because having been through any kind of emotional wounding there are lessons there are tests that we go through and I don't mean someone up there is testing us and seeing oh will you do very well at that it's it's a it's our own learning it's our own program of learning from the higher self that that says okay have I really learned and understood this have I learned and understood what it feels like in my heart in my body what does it feel like when I hear those words of love when I feel that tone there's a, a particular tone that comes with that with a, a being when that person is in my energy in the room with me or in my thoughts do I have I learned how to trust that which is discordant and to move away from it and trust that which feels like a joyful tone, something that lights me up, that makes me feel good, something that's in harmony. It's not good or bad, it's not higher or lower, but something that harmonises, something that is resonant with my soul. I'm using these music and musical analogies because I'm very musical but I also feel this group could be a very musical group because the language has suddenly taken that sort of turn. So if that resonates with you, as we say, um, uh, you know, resounding, something resounding, also about sound. If that resonates with you, um, take it as well as being very important for you at this time to get in tune with yourself and to really trust what makes you feel out of tune with yourself. You know, trust your awareness of it and move towards things that feel harmonious and bright and good. And you are also being helped with this. So in June, I feel that you're going to be able to connect with your inner guidance much more possibly with your guides as well. You've got Fall Into My Arms. This is your card from the Starseed Oracle. So this card really could be about, about love, but not just about... Um, literally falling into someone's arms but also about falling into the arms of the divine falling into the arms of a higher consciousness and allowing yourself to be embraced by that and to remember allowing yourself to remember that that is the the greatest love the union of the soul with the self with the god the god of your understanding the higher self the soul group the family the the oneness the the cosmic oneness that is really the greatest love and it's possible for some of you that you're experiencing a spiritual awakening for some of you this is definitely a twin flame soulmate karmic uh, time of of union or a preordained time of, you know, this is when it's all going to come together. And when I say karmic, I don't mean it's another karmic connection. I mean, it's a part of the agreement that you have come to a stage of learning, which is what karma is, where you could be ready for a, a union like this. So June could be about that. I'm not going to say, oh, June's all about love, because that's just trivialising it. It's about something much deeper than that. It's it's just, I, I can hardly describe it. But if you've come to this group, 
I think you'll know exactly what I mean. And one of your biggest challenges is going to be uh, to about feeling worthy of that love, feeling ready to let that love in and understanding that not only is it right because the timing is right, but also you are being helped by heaven behind the scenes to come together in that union or in that perfect job, that perfect role of service, you know, whatever it is that makes your heart flutter. That's wow this is a great reading I love this that seems to be what's sort of coming on the periphery of your life in June so it might be that you sense that it's around and that it's imminent and it's possible it might not actually manifest in June but it's like where you are in June remember this is not about time anymore time doesn't exist it's about where you are in vibration everything else collapses. It, the reality now, more than ever, is about where you are in vibration. And when you are in that vibration, and he or she is in that, vi or it, if it's a career or a, a purpose, is in that vibration, then the two inevitably come together. Um, and you've got empathic star seed. that's your other star seed oracle card, energetic sovereignty, absorbing what's not yours so it's really important for you in June this group to move away from being influenced by external forces external factors try to do your healing so that you can clear your energy of all of the fear and the trauma and the drama and the turmoil that the world has been experiencing recently you've done your service you've spent a lot of time cleaning it up consciously or unconsciously and a lot of us are exhausted um, but this is time for you to go within feel that worthiness as well for you to just step back and, and take time and detach, detach for a while and give back to yourself, whatever that means, whether that means, you know, going out in nature and just um, allowing yourself to heal, whether it means taking a few days off, whether it means pampering yourself a bit, um, whatever that is, and, and make sure you do your energy clearing first so that you have detached and, and put protection around yourself and just say, just let your guides know, I need a few days off, I'm off duty for now, you know, don't call me in the to the inner planes at night, don't get me doing any more rescue work, I'm just, you know, let me take some time off now and uh, and heal myself. So for some of you that's going to be really important in June and hopefully things will have stabilised in some ways. In a lot of ways things will have stabilised for the time being anyway because um, this is a marathon unfortunately not a sprint this um, period of transition. But strengthen yourself and um, yeah June's going to be I feel quite exciting for you. All right take care uh, Group number two, I think it is, Amethyst, uh, sorry, Adventuring Group. Thank you so much for listening. If you'd like to book a reading or any kind of session with me, energy clearing, mentoring, um, tuition for psychic development, all the links are below the video in the description box. And have a lovely June. Take care. Bye. Right, okay, if you chose the Amethyst Group, this is a really exciting one. This one, I have to say, looks as if it's a lot of it is about love. It's about destined love. It's about um, new connections. And if that isn't a an emotional love connection, it could just be reconnecting with yourself, reconnecting with what you love doing, or it could relate to other partnerships because soulmates can be, you know, they can be anything. They can be friendships. They can be uh, work partnerships. They can be two people coming together on a mission of service or to create something for the world. So, you know, it can be any kind of dynamic partnership, but this does have a lot of cards that are connected to partnerships, love, coming together but I want the first card that I feel really drawn to is the card of hope and that is just wonderful it's just like this beautiful shining sun and this card is a card for you to shake off the cobwebs come back out into the world at least in terms of your thinking you know thinking ahead having that greater vision I've just heard greater vision so some people emerging from this weird period are going to emerge with a bigger vision than you had before I feel 
what you had before may have been successful, it may have been good, it may have been okay, but you're coming out with a really big vision now. And I'm just, it's like, I can't say it strongly enough. It's like a really big vision. My guides are really emphasizing that. So um, it's time to walk away from anything that was small, anything that wasn't quite right for you. For some of you, you will have to make some changes. There is going to be a, a personal transition that you have to go through after having just been through this huge global transition. You've got the cards at the centre, right? Let's focus on the other cards. You've got, you created this situation and you have the power to change it. So it's a reminder that whatever the situation is that you're in now that, that is limiting you or that is suddenly not quite right for you anymore, you created that. So you're a powerful creator. You you created something that was okay for that time and it was perfect and before you created it, it didn't exist and you thought it would have been great. You thought this was the thing and you managed to make it happen. So remember that you can create something else. You can uncreate that and start afresh create something completely different. You've also got a favourable outcome. So whatever it is that you are trying to manifest now, it's going to have a much better outcome than you currently think, because you've got that hope card as well, which is saying, you know, you might not think it's possible for you to make a change at this stage. Um, for some of you, it will be at this progress stage of a big project. It's like, oh my God, I've got to turn around and start again. Or you might not think at this stage of your life, life that it's possible. You might think, oh, but I've studied this and I've done this all my life. This is what I've always committed to. Or for some of you, you'll have weird paradigms about age. You'll think, I can't start doing that at my age. It's too late. Whatever it is, whatever the limiting paradigm is that you have, you're being asked to be hopeful here. You're being asked to trust that you can change things. And if it is about love, you're being asked to reevaluate what love really means to you and to trust and believe that something, either something in your life can be beautiful and enduring or that something is coming into your life that will be that. This is really weird. The one before <laughs> was about love. And, um, there seems to be a lot of that happening and I do feel that some of it is to do with the lockdown. A lot of people will be emerging from lockdown knowing that what they have is not quite right or knowing that it can what they have can be better or knowing that what they have is amazing and really appreciating it and going into a deeper level of trust and commitment and love in their relationships and there will be others who emerge saying no, now I really know that I cannot settle anymore. I want that real love. I want that real enduring partnership. I want someone who's totally in my corner. You might feel as if it's time for you to brush away anything that's just not quite right. You might already know what the alternative is <laughs> for some of you. But, um, you know, free will choices. I'm not telling anyone what to do. I'm certainly not um, leading anyone away from one thing and, and into another because that is for your heart to tell you what to do. What this this seems to be saying though is that in June you are going to be much more focused on moving towards what feels really good, really right and really powerful um, for your life in terms of your emotional well-being, in terms of just waking up feeling good, feeling happy within yourself. There are lots of signs and synchronicities coming in June as well. So the world is going through an awakening and the energies are increasing and obviously that's causing a lot of chaos but it's also shedding light on a lot of um, um, untruths and falsehoods so that they can be cleared out but what's really happening is that we're coming back into divine alignment with the highest ultimately and because of that you will start to see more signs and synchronicities leading you towards what is in alignment with the highest because time is speeding up and whereas you might see you know one coincidence let's just call them you know 
every month or so, or for some people, one in a lifetime. Now it's going to be, you'll get a cluster of them. You'll ask a question in your head, you know, is this right? Is this what I think it is? And you'll get a cluster of them. That's going to start speeding up. And for some, it will be the beginning of love. For some, it will be the beginning of a divine partnership in work. It could be, you know, something that allows you to um, create something that's much more meaningful, whereas you've been trying to do that on your own for a long time. You could come into some kind of alliance that allows you to do that in a much fuller way, a much higher way, or in a way that allows you to be much more visible. Um, You've also got, I remember, soul plan, the fated life versus the destined life or the destiny life. So your soul plan is waking up now. You are waking up to your soul plan. It could be as a result of having been confined for so long but um, and, and realising that you can't settle for anything less than what's absolutely right for you. So you will be waking up to your higher plan and you'll be looking around for those people or that person who can work with you towards that higher plan. You might be in a connection that um, doesn't support you or that, that puts you down or or that makes you question yourself or makes you feel small, well, that's not going to be okay for you anymore. That's suddenly just not going to be okay. You just won't be able to tolerate that anymore. Um, and for some, it, you'll be in a relationship that's okay, but now you'll be looking for a partnership, a divine partnership that allows you to fulfil your purpose. Learning how to be human in the world, but not of it. So for some, it, this, that's uh, your card from the Starseed Oracle. So for some, it's going to be about realising that you might have compromised a bit too much in order to feel that you fit in, in order to feel normal and human and acceptable. And this could be when you start to break out, when people around you start to think, wow, what's happened to them? <laughs> You know, when you start to dress differently and do things that are a bit more quirky, but, but just much more you, or maybe you'll change your style of, of, of work. You may, may change your style of dressing. You may change your style of talking. You may change your style of self-expression. But whatever you do now, it's going to be uniquely you. And you will then attract a partner who is brave enough and authentic enough to be uniquely and truthfully himself or herself and you will because you're in that vibration of truth together you'll come together and create something that's much much higher there'll be a powerful synergy around it and for others for those of you who are in a relationship already and and for whom you know everything's fine and this is just not related to that at all you you may find that you see new things in that re relationship in that connection you realize how that connection has supported you that that person might not think the same way you do they might not believe the things that you believe they might not even understand your journey but they have always been there as your rock as your supporter throughout all these changes and throughout you um, fulfilling your mission or, or attempting to fulfill your mission and now you have absolute clarity about what and who is going into the future with you and how you are going to be here to be absolutely of service or at least to be on your highest path, the path that brings you the greatest joy. So that's it for June, um, your, uh, sorry, the Amethyst group. And if I was to sum that up, I would say this was all, <laughs> this reading's all about finding the, the, highest truth and the greatest love of your life and um, I know that sounds really dramatic and you know I don't want to build anyone's hopes up because it does depend on your actions and what you do with all of this information you know it's all in your hands but that's where your vibration appears to be moving in June and so enjoy it <laughs> okay and if you want to book a reading with me or any kind of a session with me all the links are below and um, take care. Have a great June. I think it's going to be a nice one. OK, bye. Right. OK, this is the reading for the Tiger's Eye group. And Tiger's Eye group, you might notice that you've got a couple more cards and I'll explain why in a minute. So this card, this um, reading seems to be very much about 
indecisiveness and a lack of commitment and um, needing to be very, very clear about what you need to keep in your life. It's kind of a theme at the moment, but for you, it seems as if that's a real, a really big focus. I kind of see some of you will literally be clearing out your homes, will possibly be wanting to move home, will be thinking about how to make big changes and, and it, it's going to be brutal, some of it, some of the cutting away, you know, like slicing, <laughs> slicing things off, you know, it's like, what do I really need going forward and what do I definitely not need? That's going to be a big part of your decision making. But I do feel that there's an inner drive that you are being asked to focus on that, that you're being asked to make that a really important part of your current process because you've got make a decision and right next to that you've got make a commitment. It's just bizarre. You just couldn't, you couldn't make it up. Make a decision, make a commitment. You're, it's like you're sitting on the fence. You haven't really gone over from one land, if you like, into another. Let's just say you're straddling the line between the past and the pre the past and the future. You know how you want your future to look. You know what changes you, you kind of sort of do want to make but you're terrified and you just there's something that you just cannot let go of or will not let go of I'm hearing will not let go of so being quite willful in a way and um, so we got those cards and we had cards about um, returning to innocence as well and being patient and dealing with your shadow. And I'm, I thought this is not, you know, this is great in a way. This card is about um, working on ourselves, being clear, letting go, releasing the past. Um, also, some, for some people, this felt as if it was about something really toxic from the past that you needed to let go of. Um, but it, that was all it seemed to be saying. And I thought, well, this is about blessings coming in June. I want to know what the blessings are. What What's going to come if they go through that process? So I chose two extra cards. And the cards you got were patience and planning. That's the reason that you have to do all of this, because it's a part of your planning process. You have to strip your life bare almost. You have to, sorry if that sounds dramatic and you've come here and that's not quite right, then this isn't your reading. But some people need to hear that, that you have to strip things right down and go back to basics. And you've got to plant another seed for a whole new chapter, for a whole new, sorry, mixed metaphors, a whole new um, plant, a whole new tree, a whole new new thing that you want to grow and and just watch it and you'll be surprised that it grows up to be something really beautiful and really strong because of the patience because of the planning and because of planting in the right season I've just heard that really clearly planting in the right season and then your your other extra card was the fulfillment of wishes which is just amazing so bear with this, you know, go through the steps that you need to go through, take your time with everything that's being asked of you at the moment. You know, you have to, you can't just go and, and, and plant stuff in a garden, you've got to prepare it, you've got to get the weeds out, you've got to till the soil, you've got to put your compost down, you've got to make sure the soil is nice and moist and you've got to wait for the right time of year to plant the seeds that you actually want. And I feel that's what you're doing at the moment. You're literally doing the groundwork. You're doing the groundwork for better, brighter things in the future. And I feel that June, that in June, that process continues. So let's be realistic here where we've got fulfillment of wishes. Let's be real with you because, you know, not this is not about just giving you promises. The fulfillment of wishes card, I feel that that's a promise that's coming when you do this work, when you do this preparation. I feel you could have a glimmer of something in June, towards the middle, towards the end of June, something, you know, where it starts to bear fruit. Sorry about all the gardening metaphors. Is someone actually a gardener or who's listening? I mean, there's never been a better time for us to start growing food, let's just face it. But um, for some of you, that will be a really important part of this process and you will actually be doing that right now. But you're being asked to spend time on the planning and 
if there's a decision that you need to make, please make that decision, make the commitment, and you may not be able to see what's ahead of you in the future just yet, but you need to trust. You need to trust that it's got to be better than where you are right now, because if you're stuck and you've been stuck for a long time, it's because you're in the middle of something that's not good and you've got a sense of how much better things could be. The shadow card. You're having to look at some very deep stuff that you need to clear from your past. You're having to look at those gremlins, those parts of you that stop you, that block you, that trap you, that tell you that you don't deserve anything better. You need to do the work on yourself. That's a part of preparing your garden at the moment. There's some digging and weeding to be done there as well, I've just heard. So let that be a part of your clutter clearing process. And there's never been a better time for that. I mean, there's stuff all over YouTube. You, you you will find something, you know, if you can't invest in that at the moment, you will find something that will help you to, um, you know, whether it's work on the shadow, healing the pain body, raising your vibration, affirmations that you can listen to um, before you go to sleep. You know, there's endless stuff, but you need to do that work so that when you come up to a place where you've done your planting of your seeds you'll be ready to reap that harvest and to accept it and abundantly so rather than sabotaging it so do the work put the work in the innocence card I'm just being drawn to again the prayer on the card says, Dear God and angels, thank you for helping me to see that all of your qualities of pure love and light are reflected within me and all others. Perfect. OK, so see yourself as a divine being. See yourself as a being of pure love and anything that has hurt you or wounded you in the past. See that as being ultimately another creation of pure love that came from source. You can make a decision to walk away from it and you can decide that it doesn't serve your heart good and that there are certain things that you can't take with you in the, into the future and that you can no longer tolerate but if you see that being as a higher being on their own path who just has a lot of unhealed parts then it's not about judgment because if you get into the judgment it brings you back in again somehow on a, on a kind of self-punishing vibration that you know it's like you're saying ah oh, we belong together we're all the same I'm 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 flawed as well. So what you are being asked to do is to raise the vibration of yourself, okay, beyond that connection and to see that person as having that choice as well. And if they're choosing not to do it, then that is their choice, okay. You can't do it for them. You can't heal them by staying with them. You know, if something is broken, it's broken. I'm sorry, it, it sounds so harsh and I know that this is not for everyone. This is for a few people in particular that you need to he hear that, you know, let God do the fixing, let life heal that person, let life uh, teach them and, um, you know, in the most loving way possible, turn away. Okay, so if that doesn't apply to you, <laughs> and the simplifying and the preparing the ground and all the rest of it does, then focus on that, resonate on that, uh, resonate with that, vibe with that, you know, take that. Your starseed oracle cards are all paths lead home, which is perfect considering that message. Okay, so basically remember that all souls are on that journey. All souls are on that journey ultimately and even those who seem completely lost and beyond hope, they are also on that journey and, you know, they're just in a different place, in a different part of that journey. Um, so, and you're not necessarily meant to walk that path with them, but let them go, trust that they will find their way home alone, that they have a team of guides and angels, that they also have, you know, God watching their back as well, ultimately, you know, beyond everything else, and hold the vision for your own life, turn your gaze within, look at yourself, your inner journey, your own journey, your inner authority, your intuition, your own work that you need to do on, do on yourself so that when this fulfillment of wishes does come, you will be in the right vibration to meet it, okay, and to connect with a higher love, a better love, a better purpose for yourself. And the other card you've got is a new earth. It's happening, keep holding the vision. 
I would say that this applies to the new earth and it also applies to your new life. So the way that you create your new life is not by focusing on the life that you're stepping away from, but by focusing on the life that you're moving into. Only believe in that life. Trust that vision and put all your energy into that. And, you know, on a collective level, pour your energy into the 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 earth that we're creating don't focus on the the stuff that's happening don't focus on the stuff that's that's being dismantled before our very eyes don't focus on that focus on building the new earth build your castles in the air you know build the light build your temples build your uh, utopia in your imagination build the the structures and systems of the future and the same with your, your personal life, your emotional life, your work life. Your, focus on your dreams. Don't let anything stop you from holding on to your dreams. Dream them. Dream them bigger. Strategize. Plan them. Organize yourself. Get ready and stay ready for what happens beyond this period. Get fit and stay fit and stay mentally prepared. Okay, that's it for the... Tiger's Eye group. I also just want to say very quickly, if you chose Tiger's Eye, you know, that's a card that's very much about being able to manifest, being able to manifest the future of your choosing, the life of your cho choosing, being able to manifest abundance, being able to bring in a better kind of luck. So you chose that for a reason. Take all of that with you. Take that as a part of your message as well. And if you want to work with me, if you'd like to book a reading or if you'd like to do some energy clearing or have some mentoring or work on releasing blocks or limiting limitations or anything like that at all I've put all the links below the video have a fantastic June group number four I think it's going to be great if you do that preparation it's going to be quite amazing um all right so take care and um have a great June